Welcome back. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, the Astro AI AM33D for your Cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. The AM33D is a popular meter on Amazon. Wow, thousands and thousands of likes. Let's see if this thing is as good as it claims to be. Definitely a cheapo meter. I picked this up for 16 bucks Canadian from Amazon.ca. That's around 11, 12 bucks US. Yeah, it's hard to get much cheaper than that. Definitely a no frills meter. Let's see what we get in the proverbial box. Get our instruction booklet. Not much going on here. It's a pretty basic meter, um, but everything you need to know is there in a crunch. Get our happy, unhappy card. What the heck is that? And of course, we get our test leads. Now they come in a little Ziploc bag. I have to say, I do prefer when the leads come shipped in a separate package because when they are in or loose jumping around in the box, you have a habit of ending up with a meter with scratches on it. And who wants that? Probes themselves are rated at a max 10 amp, 1000 volts, CAT 2. Um, they definitely feel cheap, not very big. Um, they are definitely pointy. And if we took a look at the other end, the shroud itself, eh, I think it'll do the job. Very cheap, kind of plasticky feeling. Uh, definitely no silicon going on here. But uh, my biggest gripe actually is the fact that these are really short. Um, wow, very short leads. Not a whole lot of room to play with. Maybe one and a half, two feet at best. Okay, shrink wrap aside. Let's get naked. Well, multimeter that is. And here we go. First impressions much better without the shrink wrap. Surprisingly, it actually feels not too bad in the hand. Holster, um, you can see it's a little bit on the loose side, but uh, it's not gonna fall off, no worries there. And generally speaking, a little more heft than that last X-Tech that I just reviewed. Um, yeah, definitely feels better than that one. The back side, we have that tilt stand, and if you can see, it is really petite. Um, yeah, and what I don't like, there you go. What a funky angle that is. Holy moly cannoli. So you're pretty well, oh gosh, it's about an inch, inch and a half, maybe about three, four centimeters off the table. And wow, it is not much of a tilt stand. I don't know why they decided to make it uh, so paltry, but yeah, that's it, that's all. Okay, let's turn on that display, and there you go. Um, minimalist at best, this is a 2000 count multimeter, and wow, those are some tiny digits. Uh, yeah, in terms of the actual contrast, it's not too bad. Perhaps on an angle, it is not the greatest, but since when do you work on a multimeter? like this you know it's more like this but that being said um yeah it's it's okay you're okay man you're okay and it has a interesting choice of color that is not black it is a navy blue going on with that red it looks kind of regal starting off the 12 o'clock position is the off Volts AC up to 500 volts. Amps from 2000 microamps to 10 amps. Test signal generator with a 50 hertz output. Diode and continuity. Resistance up to 200 mega ohm. Finally, volts DC up to 500 volts. Finally, two soft touch buttons at the top. We have our hold as well as the backlight. And our outputs, three of them in total. High current 10 amp on the left. In the middle, we have our voltage resistance, the milliamp, and the signal output. Finally, on the far right, we have our con. Selector switch itself, it's rather small. It requires pinching, really, to be able to turn it properly. Not very comfortable. One thing I'm definitely not liking is those input jacks, or the input test leads, actually, are rather 
hard to get in there. You got to really push them in there. Ah! Yeah. So that is rather lame. As you can see, one of those input leads went in there okay in the common, but look at that positive just does not want to get in there. Why? Why? We should be looking at 250 millivolts. We are a couple counts off, 248. Next up, we should be looking at 2.50 volts. Let's see how close we can get. 2.49 out just by one. Not bad, not bad at all. Dial mode is next. Gonna start off with a standard diode. Let's see if we can measure that forward voltage drop. No worries here. All right, let's pull out the LEDs, shall we? Starting with the green LED, it is barely lit, but we're not getting a forward voltage indicator. Yellow is lit, but once again, no indicator. Red LED, it is also lit. Blue LED, mm, wow, it actually is lighting up. Very hard to see though. And finally, the white. No, nothing, no can do. So four to five in terms of the actual illumination, but uh, 0 for five in terms of forward voltage drop indication. So four to five in terms of the illumination and zero for five in terms of the actual display. Ah, it's hoping for better. Output voltage in diode mode, 2.5 volts. Next up, a quick voltage showdown between the AM33D's cousin, the WH5000A. Yes. Here we go. Going up to a solid 5.7, 5.8 volts. 5.84 for the WH5000A, 5.81. Obviously not as good resolution on the smaller AM33D, but still they are pretty well neck and neck. Let's bring it up to whopping 3.7 volts. I'm sorry, 13.7 volts. 13.8 for the WH5000A, 13.7, spot on for the little Astro, up, up, and away, 21.9 volts. We are over limit right now because we are a non-auto ranging unit, so let's just take it up a notch. 21.9 is what we want to see. 21.9, spot on, little guy, and 22 for the WH5000. Okay, we're going to max it out now. 31.5 volts, 31.5. Hey, you are impressing me, little one, and 31.7 for the WH5000A. Good stuff. Well, suffice to say, that too, that this little Astro AI AM33D is pretty darn accurate. I'm loving it. Good stuff. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. Don't get jealous. Trying out the signal output right now, and it should be around 50 hertz uh, in terms of the frequency, and it's pretty close. Yeah, around 56, uh, according to the little Edipon. But that being said, it's a fairly decent looking square wave. 0.5 volts peak to peak and if we just switch it two volts one volt yeah all in all i don't know how useful a function this would be but uh hey i'm not complaining gotta tell you i'm really bummed by that input jack on the uh, positive terminal i just don't like the fact that it does not go in all the way oh aggravating or what Taking a quick look at resistance, we're sitting at 9 mega ohm right now. And not too bad. Take it down to 7 mega ohm. Not the fastest in the world, 5 mega ohm. Down to 1 mega ohm. I don't know. All in all, it's accurate. Um, just a little on the slow side, but uh, hey, workable. Gonna try the high resistance now. We've got a couple of Vichy 100 mega ohm resistors tied up in series here effectively giving us 200 mega ohm how well will the little guy do let's find out all right it is in and there we go it came up and it disappeared now this is probably because it is slightly overshooting that 200 mega ohm uh, yeah, that's too bad, but uh, it is coming up, so that is a good thing.
You can see right now how that uh, is just hovering over the 200 mega ohm mark. That's why it's causing problems for the little AM33D. No problem though for the Keysight because uh, this one has a whopping 600 mega ohm resolution. Next up, we're looking at household mains. Should be sitting around 120 or so volts. Here we go. And yeah, 119.8. Looking good. Alrighty, it's milliamp testing time. Now this has a 200 milliamp max. Um, even though on the meter itself, it does say 500 milliamps. Uh, really, that's not the case. Uh, even in the manual, it is stating a 200 milliamp threshold. So let's try it out. Here we go. Sitting at around 90 milliamps. No worries there. 140 milliamps. 179. 189, 90, 200. And you can see we are just over. Bring it back down to 170. 200, no, over again, 187, 189. Yeah, so we are definitely maxed out at that 200 milliamp threshold. But it works. Good stuff. Hot diggity dang, my favorite time. Continuity time. That's right, I've got the default test probes. And as you can see, check it out. It took a lot of swearing. I mean, trying, but nonetheless, we are in properly, finally. Wow. That was a lot of fun. Okay, continuity. Here we go. Three, two, one, default test probes. Oh, utterly painful. Yeah, it is just slow and not very loud. Latched, but lame. Ugh. Oh, yeah, probe masters. Three, two, one. Oh, my God. Gosh, it is no better. I don't even want to think about it. Is that even slower? Wow, painful. So without a doubt, this is not a meter for continuity. Ugh. A very quiet 53.6 DBAs in continuity mode. I have no idea. Already time for some sizzle, some high voltage sizzle. Time to snap, crackle, pop. Well, I hope not, but you never know. Thousand volts DC coming your way. Three, two, one, put the safety goggles on. Here we go. And 1,100 plus volts, no worries. Bring it back down, looking good. No smoke. One more time. And a boost of thousand volts coming your way, folks. And wow, all looks to be good. Whew, honest to gosh, I wasn't sure, but it's okay. Good job, Astro. By the way, we've only got 15 seconds or so for that backlight. After that, it will fade to black. Teardown time, here we go. And as you can see, that holster comes off nice and clean. Um, yeah, nothing special, just cheap rubber. Main meter itself, we have one, two Phillips holding it in from the bottom. Let's take it apart. Taking a look on the inside, yeah, you guessed it, no shielding. Why is it such a big deal to put a couple cents worth of shielding in a multimeter? Anyway, down to the main attraction. Looking interesting. Let's get a little closer, shall we? A little better than I was expecting on this cheapo. We've got uh, nice standard input jacks, the split variety, but that's okay because you do have that reinforcement at the back. Taking a look at that high current shunt. Um, not too bad. Not that chunky though. Would have liked to have seen something perhaps a little bit thicker, but you know what? It's a lot better than we see in a lot of cheapos, so I'm not complaining. As well, we've got one lonely PTC on the voltage side of things. This is on the milliamp side. It's a 500 milliamp fuse, 600 volt, and a 10 amp, 600 volt on the high current. Right above the fuse, and really a little close for comfort, is that transducer piece. Fab date, March 29th, 2019. We also have one voltage potentiometer right here. So worst case scenario, you can do some self-calibration. On the reverse side, we're looking at that nice rotary selector switch track. 
Um, fairly decent spacing, and it looks to be gold-plated, looking good. Kind of reminiscent of those crop circles, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm, makes you wonder. Finally, the rotary selector switch itself. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six rotary selector track pads, and that is what makes contact with those nice-looking tracks. Other than that, not much else going on. Um, ooh, interesting. Just zoom in here a little bit, and they've actually got a piece of tape holding down that display. Hmm. Scotch tape. <laughs> Main IC is cobbed. Really not much else to see. LCD display on the back. And it is in there with a few Phillips screws. So that's it. That's all, folks. I'm going to put this back together and come back with my closing, closing thoughts. thoughts. So the Astro AI AM33D I like it. Yeah, this little meter does a lot. Yeah, it's not the most feature-rich meter out there, but you know what? It's also priced right. 200 mega ohm, that's nothing to sneeze at. And that signal out generator, well, that's just nifty. Now, it's really too bad that continuity sucked the big one way too slow and way too low. Also, the display, definitely nothing to write home about. I really wish it was a little bit bigger, crisper, and just generally better. Inside it was clean, and if you keep this away from high voltage, I don't foresee any problem. For around the house, you should be fine. The Astro AI AM33D gets a solid three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.